Hi, welcome to Essence of Zen Media. We're going to get you started with programming Python today. I was asked to make some tutorials for people to you know, get started, help them out, because uh, they're missing a few steps or foundations for programming. So we're going to start with Python, because Python is super simple, but it's powerful if you know you use it more and you know how to manipulate it. Now, I myself, is uh, I'm just a novice, but you know, I've helped out people from my classes and whatever. Knowledge is knowledge. It's free knowledge. Take it or leave it. Uh, it might not be 100% accurate or pinpoint on all things, but I guarantee you I can teach you something with Python. Now, let's go ahead and get started. You can download Python from python.org, and you go to download, and you click releases if you want to find a different version. The two main versions people use are 2.7 and 3.3 because 3.3 is the most recent um, release for Python. Personally, I use 3.2, but that's besides the point. Now, before we get actual started with the shell and the coding and the lines, teaching what a variable is, you need to know that there's uh, levels of programming. Computers read machine language, which is nothing but binary. And then you have your next step, which is the assembler, which kind of pieces together commands and operations that you can group uh, like bits together. And you know, people usually use assembly to you know program the assembler. You know, the it's closer to hardware and closer to machine language. So you see a lot of hex and a lot of binary. You also have the linker, which is that next step of translation between machine language to our higher level language which we're going to use with Python. Python is the higher level language and basically it just means that uh, it uses actual words uh, for us in America it uses USA English I say that because then you have the Europe and British you know, the Queen's English and you know okay so that's what uh, the, the levels of programming are now we're going to go ahead and click our start button. It's all glowy. And we're going to go ahead and type in Python. Now, please note that you have the command line, which is like the, uh, it's basically a terminal. It's uh, the CMD command window for Windows. <laughs> command window for Windows, because everything in Windows is a window, apparently. That's why, that's why the algorithm is called Windows, but that's another story. What you want to use, though, is idle. Okay, I know it's like the shell, the GUI, it shows everything and it gives you haptic feedback so you can actually test things on the go and on the fly. But this is not where you actually write your program. This is main, I use this mainly for testing and just to have fun basically. What you want to do is click File, click New Window. And it's going to bring up this little guy here and this is kind of like your actual source file which you're going to actually program everything on. Now that you know we got this far, I want to go ahead and get you started with, you know, what is a variable? A variable is just what it is. If you if you're taking a math class, and you know about find the variable x. It's anything that you can give a name and then give that object a value. For instance, I have the variable number, and I'm going to assign. So that's what this one equal sign means to assign the variable the value of three. So, if I do, if I call the, var the variable number, it's going to give me its value, which is 3. Now, the variable, you call this kind of variable an integer, or int for short. Then you can also have a float. A float is a, uh, an int, basically, that's not a whole number. So, and these can be signed or unsigned, by the way, meaning you can have negative and positive ints and floats. So, for instance, um, my float equals 3.14 I could just say pi equals 3.14 but it equals more than more uh, more than 3.14 but whatever you get my point so then I'm gonna say my float and you have 3.14 now if you want to play a little bit you want to have a little bit fun with uh, the number which is an ant you can do this uh, I don't know I'm not sure I never actually did this in the shell let's find out we're gonna go ahead and try to make gonna co convert um, the integer number into a float. Yep, and as you see here, it came out as 3.0, making it you know a decimal number. So now it is a float. Now you also have strings and chars, but with Python, I do believe they don't really have char. No, they don't. Uh, 
yeah, they don't. Because it's made simple. So a char is basically a single uh, character. So you like uh, you say a. That's a char in, in other programming. If you know, you gotta sign it with uh, the co the quotation mark or single quotation mark. But that's whatever. So let's stick with a string. So my string will equal uh, hello, hello Dar. Dar, yeah, because we're we're speaking bad English and being like Thor. Hello Dar. Okay, so then you can call my string, and it will actually output the sentence, and you see it's used the, the single quotations to identify that this is not an int or a float. I do believe there's double... Okay, so doubles aren't in Python either. Okay, now you see here that we have the simple uh, variables displayed on the Python shell. Now, we go over here, and we go into our number, you know, our actual source file, and let's do number equals three. Now, you remember in the shell, when we call a number, it displayed number. But we're going to see if that happens with our actual source file. So we're going to type it up, and then we're going to go to run, and we're going to put run module. Or we can press F5 for short. Now, with Python, you got, always got to make sure your source file is saved before you run it. And I guess it's kind of acts like if you use C Sharp or C++ or Visual Studios, when you compile and run a, a program or test it, you know, it has to build it. And I guess technically it's kind of the same thing but right here we're gonna have our Python for me it's gonna be it's Python 32 I think if you use the new one's gonna be you know, Python 33 is whatever I made a folder called example projects and this is what I use for uh, testing videos and whatnot so we're gonna go ahead and do test 2 now it's important to save or when you naming your your source file you have to add the dot py it's, it's very important that you do it it lets the shell and the application for Python identify the file type and know, hey, this is a Python file. If you do not save the file name with .py at the end of it, you have to have the .py. Otherwise, when you load the, the source file into the compiler or the, the, the application to edit it, the IDE, I guess you could, it's not really, it's not, it's an IDE, but it, uh, you know, the area over here, it won't have the color coding, and I'm pretty, I don't know if it will run or not. I've never actually tested it. I just know it creeped me out when all my color codexing and, and whatnot disappeared. And I was like, oh my goodness, why is this doing this? And I realized it wasn't a .py. So you just save it as file name .py and save it. All right. When we ran the program, you see nothing happened. It just gave you blank outputs. That's because... When you're running with your, your source file, you have to tell it to print. You have to. It's the same thing as saying STD uh, or using STD uh, C out uh, arrow, and then the double arrows. You know your message for C plus plus. So for this one though, for Python, we're going to use the built-in function called print, and we have to make sure we close them in um, parentheses. I almost say quotation marks, but parentheses. Because we need to tell it, you know, it needs to know what to print. So you want to put it in these parentheses to say, hey, you're gonna you're gonna print out the variable number. So whatever you know number it is is gonna print it out. So when we go to we're gonna press S uh, L5 because I'm I like pressing S L5 instead. And we're gonna see what happens. Yes, we're gonna save it or change the, save the changes. And it outputs three. Now if we go here, you know, we change that to two and we you know, we save it and run it again. It's gonna output two. So now we you know we're getting started. Yay, we got variables. Awesome. And we're just now passing the benchmark for nine. So we have about six more minutes for this video at least. I'm going to show you about um, other variables too. So let's go ahead and make my string again. And equals hello. And then we're also going to do. Um, you guys know what float will output. But the same thing can be said with print my string. I wonder if it has tab. No, probably not. Okay, so we're gonna run that. Yes, it. And very important, always make sure you close off <laughs> your variables. So we're gonna run that, save it. Uh, my string, did I misspell? Yes, I did. I misspelled string over here. Alrighty, and run it one more time. 
and it's gonna say hello. Now with the built-in function for print, you can also print an actual built-in string. So right here, instead of making a variable with your string in it, you can change it up and just say I want to print out this line here. So then you go here and type in I want to print this line. Awesome. Period. And then you go to save and test it out and voila. The funny thing is, you know, you can get a little bit more complex with Python and this might be a little further down the line, but I can just show you. You can do um, my string, and then you want to add another section for the variable. So you're going to go ahead and have in your built in string to the number. And then, and I have the spaces because you know, you're going to have to have the spaces in it. And then plus, and then you want to convert your number into a string because you cannot print out. A, a int within a string for an output so you have to convert using the str built-in function um, number and then you see how the number got enclosed with these uh, parentheses you want to make sure you encase everything like the mistake I made earlier you want to make sure you finish off an entire line so at this point this should be pretty much good to go so we're going to save it and run it and then it says hello to the number two because our variable my string is has a value hello and then we went ahead and added the to the number built in string and then we added the conversion for our number which value is two so it takes two and make it into a string two and throws it out at the end and that's pretty much uh, what we have for today when it comes to variables so remember that our variables consist of ints and you see how it turns properly, that's how you know it's a built-in function. Um, strings, which is str, floats, and I think that's pretty much what we're going to go over it for today, at least. Our next video will consist of using if statements, and I take that back, the next video will be more of uh, extra code, so it'll tell you how to, like basically show you multiplic uh, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. And then, if we have time, we'll throw in if statements. If not, the third video will be about if statements, then loops, and all this crazy world of excitement and magic. Because everyone knows programmers are the real life wizards. Yes, my friends, we are actual wizards. I'm a wizard in training. I'm 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 Harry Potter. I'm 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 very flamboyant with my with my wand. And okay, I'm just not making fun of Harry Potter before I get hate. You know, I'm hate now. But in general, programmers are known as wizards. If you have a big beard, you'll you known as like a you know level number or level int wizard. And because we make magic happen, and businesses love programmers because we make magic happen. This is all magical. People can't understand. This is what you're learning. You're learning magic. Do you believe in magic? Uh 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 uh. uh. So thank you for watching this video. Um, please. Uh, Leave me a comment below if you want to know more or have any suggestions. I would like for you guys to subscribe and like this video if you like it and if you want to subscribe. You know, I'm not saying ooh, hypnotize you into liking and subscribing. Do what you please. If this video helped you out a lot, feel free to share it. Um, again, let me know if you want to know something specific. And I guess I said specific, I just have a southern accent, so sometimes I'm saying Pacific, but I'm not going pro going So yeah, you guys take care and you have a wonderful day and thank you for the video. But you know what it takes to hit up tonight. You're a good girl. Do what it takes to heat up tonight. Yeah.